We've seen our fair share of uh, couples in anime and manga. But every now and then, there's that special charismatic couple that really elevates the whole series to another level. So that's why I wanted to make this list my top 5 anime and manga power couples. Let's have a look together. Igaze! So uh, we're going to go through the list together and um, the way I want to do this is as follows. I'm going to start with number five and we're going to go all the way up to number one, which will be my favorite anime manga couple. I'm going to show the series where the couple appears in first so you can guess which couple it is. And then I'm going to uh, show you the couple and we're going to discuss why they're on the list, of course. So let's get started. And first, we're going to start with number five, and that's from the series Urusei Yatsura. Now, people who know the series will probably know which couple I'm talking about. It's, uh, of course, Moroboshi, Ataru, and Lam. Now, uh, the reason I put them uh, on this list, uh, on number five, is because of the, the fun dynamic that is going on uh, between uh, between these two. It's a story written by Takahashi-sensei, Rumiko Takahashi, uh, who is a female mangaka, and she's great at writing uh, enjoyable stories, fun stories, and stories that have cute couples, uh, in my opinion. So to paint uh, uh, the, 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 the setting a little bit, so uh, Ataru is... Uh, uh, a young man who, who still goes to high school and he's dating a girl called Shinobu. Uh, they often get in fights because he's a bit of a ladies man, he likes looking at the ladies, he, uh, he, he tends to run after other women. Uh, she really dislikes that, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, that creates uh, some fi fighting between them. She also is a little bit strict, she doesn't like him looking at other women even, so... Uh, there's that dynamic going on in the beginning. But uh, one evening when he gets home, he notices that uh, there are camera crews and so on there. And turns out, uh, space invaders, but not the kind that you saw in the, in the classic video game, uh, aliens uh, arrived at his place. And the leader of the aliens says, look, we're going we're gonna to take over the Earth unless you can win against our prime fighter, so to speak, uh, in the game of Onigokko. Uh, and onigoko is Japanese for uh, tag your it. So he needs to grab, he has a couple of days time to do that, and he needs to grab that alien person. Turns out the alien who's his adversary is actually the daughter of the leader of the aliens, uh, Lum, which you can see here on the screen. Now, what's peculiar about her, aside from the fact, of course, that she's an alien, is that uh, and she's very sexy drawn, uh, is that she has horns, she can fly, and she can produce electricity from her body. So anyone who gets close to her can get a pretty hefty shock. Uh, so uh, the, the competition starts. Uh, Ataru needs to grab hold of her. Uh, he fails miserably in the beginning. And near the end of the competition, eventually, he manages to grab her. And uh, from there, the story develops that uh, actually he has to marry her. <laughs> and uh, she, she, she's immediately uh, smitten with him. She... she calls him darling, uh, and Ataru, on the other hand, is like, no, 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 wait, wait, uh, I, I didn't agree to anything here, and, and he just wants to live his life, he wants to be free, he wants to be able to, to pursue uh, other women, um, and in, in, in that sense, a certain love triangle develops, so you have Ataru, his uh, original girlfriend, Shinobu, and Lum, uh, severe, uh, heftily uh, chasing him. And that's the fun part of the story, actually. Then there are lots of other developments, of course, going on. Uh, but the main, the center point of the whole story is actually this couple, these two, Lum uh, trying to, uh, to get with, together with him and uh, Ataru uh, tr actually trying to run away, <laughs> literally speaking. Uh, and I remember when I saw the series for the first time, I was constantly thinking like, you idiot, you have this wonderful per person here. And that's great also because... The main point of the of the of the of the of the series of the couple even is Lum in my opinion. She's so pure, 
she's so honest uh she's so true uh in her loving and and, and she's so caring and yeah she has her own uh quaint parts yes yeah, she's an alien of course and yeah if if, if she gets uh mad you you can get an electroshock but hey you, you gotta have you, you gotta take a hit every now and then for true love right so uh and i remember constantly thinking like what what kind of idiot ataru is that he, he he runs away from her he, he has this fantastic girl she's beautiful she's sincere she's she's wonderful and uh, he's just running away because he's he's trying to uh to uh, get, get get out from under it. Uh, spoiler alert, near the end, they do get together then. But uh, the whole series revolves around that, that fantastic dynamic between those two, the, the love triangle with, with Shinobu involved, and, and then the other characters that get tacked on. But for me, this is uh, my, my favorite couple, mostly thanks to Lum uh, and the fact that he's a, a bit of, of a ladies man and, and running around and, and trying to evade her adds to the dynamic of course but she's actually the main part that uh, this couple is uh, is on my list moving on to number four uh, the series i've written here is uh, death note and uh, the couple is yagami light and amane misa now hold on hold on before you start typing array in a, typing away uh, in a rage frotting at the mouth like why did you put this couple on here uh it's a very dark story and it's a very dark kind of love and i think that kind of love also needs its place on a list like this because not every kind of love is beautiful and pure and I think this is the epitome of kuruteru ai in Japanese, which means love that has been perverted, love that has gone wrong. And for multiple reasons, actually. At face value, you would think successful university student, a successful idol, uh, they get together, uh, you know, the perfect couple, you would think. But if you know the whole story, then it, it's just so tremendously dark. Now, uh, the reason uh, Misa falls in love with Light is already, in my opinion, the wrong reason. She, uh, her parents got killed, uh, the culprit was never punished, and uh, Light, as Killa, with his death note, killed off those uh, culprits who weren't put in jail. And from there, Misa starts idealizing him. She starts to look at him as like some kind of messiah almost. So her love is not so much for light as it is for Kila. She falls in love with Kila first before she falls in love with light. So already there, we have a very dark, bad starting point for a relationship. She falls in love with him, but for the wrong reasons. Moreover, she idolizes him. She fixates on him even making it so that she's unable to see what he's actually doing, the dark path that he's taken. And she's also unable to see the fact that he's actually just using her. And that's on the dark side uh, of Light's love. His love is just using that person for your own goals. That's it. He doesn't have any true feelings for her. He doesn't care for her. He, she's just a means to an end to him. She has a death note as well, which comes in very handy for him at times. He uses her as a, as a chess piece on the board uh, against L. Uh, at times he cheats on her because that fits his goal. He, it, it helps him further his goals. Uh, he doesn't think twice of it. Uh, even when they live together, he, he just keeps using her just as a, as a, as a means to an end. And that's, uh, that's also a very dark way of, of being in a relationship. That you look at that person just almost as a thing, not as a human being. And the way he uses her, knowing that she's uh, so incredibly deeply in love with him even though it's for the wrong reasons at first she's still she's very much in love with him she she idolizes him and he just doesn't think twice he's just just using her any way he wants and can it's a very dark couple 
but at the same time if you know the story of death note it matches the story it's the kind of couple that will make a dark story even darker adds an extra dark dimension to this already dark story and uh, that's why this 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 couple uh touched me so much but in not in a, in, a, in a heartwarming sense in the sense that wow love can really go wrong so so far it can really become abusive even um and 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 what happened here really it, it kind of grabbed me by the throat i must say when i read it for the first time in manga uh, and again when i saw it in anime form um you you kind of want to shout shout at misa you want her to wake up see what's actually happening but she's so fixated on him she she idolizes him to such an extreme that it's impossible for her to break free uh, from that actually abusive relationship i have to say and near the end of the story as well uh after light has passed away you see that she's just an empty shell of a human being she's lifeless uh her eyes look dead and uh, i believe even though it's not explicitly stated in the manga i believe with the last panel we see her standing on top of a high building thinking of light on valentine's day i think that's the point where she just jumps off and kill herself uh i think she she simply cannot continue without him even though he used and abused her she cannot continue without him and uh, it, it it becomes the death of her very dark story a very dark couple but i wanted to put them on the list because i also want to show different facets of la of of love of couples and not all of it is clean and pure and that's why i put this uh, this couple on the list now for number three we're going to go to the brighter lighter side again and the series is maison ikoku now maison ikoku also written by uh, takahashi rumiko sensei uh, the, the the power couple here of course is yusaku and kyoko this is the opposite of the former couple a very pure heartwarming story uh, you constantly root for yusaku to be able to confess his love to kyoko but at the same time you also root for kyoko so she can shed her demons off and move forward with her life now if i can paint just the the, the main setting here kyoko is actually is I believe at the start of the manga 21 years old and she's a, a widow so she's a very young widow her husband died at a very early age and in doing so she inherited the mansion that he owned now a mansion in japanese is like an apartment complex small with a couple of rooms that are rent out usually not so expensive and you have a caretaker that can be the owner that can be somebody who's paid to be the caretaker who's staying there now she's the care caretaker and Yusaku, uh, as a student, still is, is actually renting one of the rooms there. And uh, pretty early on, he falls in love with her. But Kyoko, she's stuck in a swamp with her demons holding her back. She's a young widow. Uh, the picture of her dead husband is on her desk. She thinks of him daily. It weighs on her and it, it, it stops her from being able to move forward so already there we have an interesting dynamic right on top of that then you have the other tenants who constantly butt in who constantly organize parties usually in yusaku's room <laughs> uh, sorry for him uh, which means that it's all that more difficult for him to find time alone with kyoko and 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 to be able to go on a date with her or ask her even for out for a date or or to confess his feelings to her so you have that whole dynamic going on on top of that then you have other people who 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 join uh, the story then you have uh, a young student who uh, who kind of has a, a almost an almost unhealthy crush on yusaku creates all kinds of misunderstandings and problems for him as well and on the other hand uh, kyoko has a, a suitor who is very rich very successful man uh trying to woo her with with his uh, fancy car flowers and whatnot and 
Yusaku from his side feels like he cannot compete with someone as successful as that guy. He's not Yusaku is not rich. He's not he doesn't have any particular skill. He's not extremely successful. He's just well plain normal, and he feels like he cannot compete, and that holds him back. On her side, Kyoko as well. When she starts to have feelings for Yusaku, she has various demons that she's struggling with. Most of all, the fact that she kind of feels she needs to remain faithful to her dead husband. Is it okay for her to move on? Right? That that's something she's really struggling with. And at the same time, she then sees that that young girl throwing herself uh, at at Yusaku, and that that also creates then. A, again some distance between her and Yusaku just when they were starting to get a little bit closer maybe so you constantly have that that dynamic going on both of them struggling with their own issues and the fun part is you cannot help but actually root for both of them you want Yusaku to be able to just move ahead take Yoko by the hand confess his love and pull her out of her 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 swamp where she's stuck in actually but at the same time you're also rooting for Kyoko you want her to to she's young she 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 has a right to still have a happy life to have a family life right and and you want to cheer her on at the same time you understand them you understand their reasonings i mean if if i were in Kyoko's place and my 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 wife passed away at an early age I would, I would also struggle with that to move on. I, I, I can understand that if you truly love someone, you're going to have trouble to let go. And it feels a bit like you're betraying them if you move on. Even though your, your, your partner who passed away probably would want you to move on, would want you to be happy. It creates a very interesting dynamic in this story. And it, it's so deep. It's so warm, so heart moving. At the same time, there are a lot, there's a lot of comedy in it as well, with the other tenants constantly butting in, partying, and so on. Uh, but but at the heart of the story is this couple, and this couple is really what makes the manga and what makes the anime. So if you want to read or watch a heartwarming story, a love story where you really can root for both of the uh, the the partners in the couple, uh, then this is definitely the manga I can recommend. Uh, as I talked about Urusei Yatsura, there I was mostly rooting for uh, Lam and thinking of Ataru as an idiot. I was like, you idiot, you, you have everything you, you could ever hope for in Lam, and you're running away from her. But here you're actually rooting for both of them, and there are deeper layers at work here. You have the, the whole issue with, with that husband looming over them, um, the, the 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 insecurities that Yusaku is dealing with it's 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 a very very well crafted love story actually so if you want to read something like that definitely check this one out i heartily recommend it both for men and women because i enjoyed his story my wife enjoyed his story when we were both young uh and and even up until today we we still really love revisiting this this lovely couple Number two, then, uh, the series here is something completely different, Hooked on Oken. Now, uh, when I say Hooked on Oken, one couple jumps to mind, of course, is Kenshiro and Yulia. Now, the setting of this manga is we're in a post-apocalyptic world due to a nuclear war. Uh, it's all wasteland and um, there are gangs just, just, just pillaging, raping all over the place. And Kenshiro is the Hokuto no Densho-sha, which means the successor of the Hokuto martial art. There's only one successor per generation. He's the one of our generation. And his, um, well, but that brings a lot of responsibilities with, with it. One of those being that he needs to protect the emperor, which of course we don't know who it is because in, due to the whole war thing, uh, they, Kenshiro himself doesn't know who, who the actual emperor is or who the descendants of the emperor are and uh, to, to protect uh, the people and the peace uh, at the beginning of the story he's dating Yulia and they have a very profound 
sincere, deep love. However, Yulia is a very charismatic woman and she caught the attention of Kenshiro's dear friend Shin, who is a practitioner of a different martial art called Nanto. And uh, eventually Shin confronts Kenshiro. He, uh, he beats him in a duel and uh, he, he kidnaps Yulia, leaving Kenshiro behind for death. Uh, Kenshiro, through sheer power of will and by determination, determined to be, get back together with Yulia, pulls himself up, survives, even though he's gravely wounded, and starts walking in the dry, heated desert. Every step bringing him closer to his beloved Yulia. And uh, that's a powerful message. Because here we don't have a story where at the end they get together. Here we get a story of what if you have love and you lose it? What if you have found true love, but because of your own shortcomings, uh, you lose that love? And Kenshiro's shortcoming here was that he's too naive, he's too trusting, and uh, he wasn't hardened enough for this harsh new world. And because of that, he was beaten in the duel and he lost his the love of his life, actually. And that's also a powerful story because it could have stopped there, but it didn't. Kenshiro persevered. His, his love for Yulia is so strong that he cannot let himself die. He cannot give up. And he goes through a very harsh journey to get back with her, defeating enemy after enemy, growing as he gets closer to her, getting stronger, uh, getting more determined, maturing in a sense. And that's a very powerful message. You, if you lose your love, you can get it back if you want it hard enough. And if you're willing to work on yourself, if you're willing to take steps forward, which is what Kenshiro does in this story. That's such a powerful message. And even halfway the story, when he's reunited, or when he thinks he's going to be reunited with her, and when Shin tells him with his dying breath that Yulia actually committed suicide, again, that was a very powerful message, I wouldn't say, more like a powerful image in the story, because it turned Kenshiro into a shell of his former self. He kept believing in her, and he kept moving forward. Yulia, on her side, also kept believing that Kenshiro didn't die, that they were going to be reunited, and she never gave herself to Shin, no matter how many riches he gave her. He gave her an entire kingdom, actually, but still, it all didn't matter to her. She was constantly from high atop their skyscraper building. She was just looking out the window with sad eyes, just longing for Kenshiro. But in the very end, she couldn't take it anymore. And she jumped off the building, committing suicide just before Kenshiro arrived there. A very fateful story. Uh, it, 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 it was heart-wrenching when I read it uh, for the first time. Even now, I still... This is a story, actually, that a couple of times brought tears to my eyes, to be honest. And the fact that she passed away turned Kenshiro into a husk of his former self, still performing his duties as the Denshosha, as the successor, but just going through the motions. And you see that the people around him Everybody can see it, everybody notices it, but they don't know what, what, what to do because it's no longer the Kenshiro <clears throat> that they loved and then and knew. He became a completely different person. And, and that's what can happen to someone when they lose their love. It can turn them into just an empty shell of the person they were before. And that's very well transmitted in this manga. Eventually, he learns that she did survive that jump, that she was saved, actually. 
And he continues his journey then, revived, revitalized. The fire is back in his eyes. He, he moves forward, eventually being reunited with her. A beautiful moment where he defeats his older brother, Rao. And there the story could end, but it didn't. It continued. And what was also a powerful message is he's the successor of Hokuto. He is the Hokton of Densho-sha. He is the one that needs to bring peace to the land. But what does he do? He's reunited with Yulia. He knows that she has a sickness, making it so she won't live so long anymore. And so he moves with her to a tiny village where nobody knows them to live a simple life together. And I thought that was so beautiful. And I know it's something you can have a lot of discussion about. Should he put his duties as the successor above Yulia or not. But in my opinion, that was the right choice. That was the choice that he needed to make. He put everything aside for his loved one. He stayed with her until the very end. He took care of her. And it's only after she passed away that he started moving out into the world again and started resuming his role as the Hokuto no Densho-sha, the successor of Hokuto. Keeping her in his heart forever, clearly you could see throughout the whole story that there wasn't anyone else who was going to take her place in his heart. But even though it was short, he lived his life with her and he put that first and foremost above his duties as a successor. And in my opinion, that's actually the strength of his martial art, the true strength of somebody who, who is a practitioner of Hokuto Shinken, the martial art that he uses, is that it comes from the heart, is that it comes from a place of love and not a place of negative feelings. So in that sense, I think it really matches for the successor, the Den Shosha, to actually choose love over everything else. So that for me is one is for all those reasons, this is a, a definite power couple of manga and anime. Also a series from the 80s. Yeah, I'm, I grew up in the 80s, so... Uh, but, but definitely a series that is worth reading, worth watching. And this couple is, is interwoven into the story in such a way that it really elevates the story. There are so many uh, messages in it, so many ways that love is being shown. Um, taking back lost love, uh, putting love above other duties, and so on, and so on, keeping believing in each other, and so on. It, 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 it's magnificently well written. Definitely a manga you need to read or an anime that you need to experience. I would recommend a manga over the anime because I thought the manga was so well drawn, so well written. The anime has a lot of filler also in it, so... But the manga is wonderful. Uh, give it a try. You won't be disappointed. And then my number one couple of all manga and anime comes from the series Sti Hanta or City Hunter. And when I talk about that series, it's of course Saibaryo and Makimura Kaori. Now, this couple is the... is 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 the top of all anime and manga couples, as far as I'm concerned, for uh, for various reasons. Uh, for those that don't know the series, just a short uh, recap. Um, so Ryo Saiba is a private investigator in Tokyo, uh, but is active in the underworld, actually. So taking on dangerous missions, protecting people, uh, getting kidnapped victims back, and so on, and so on, uh, defeating thugs, uh, Yakuza, and whatnot. And uh, he has a partner called Makimura, not Kaori, but her older brother. And in the beginning of the series, he gets shot and killed. And uh, with his dying breath, Makimura asks Ryo to promise him that he will take care of his younger sister, being Kaori. So Kaori becomes his, uh, his new business partner, so to speak, in the agency called XYZ. So in a detective agency, Usually it's Ryo that takes on the dangerous tasks and it's Kaori that is the one who meets the clients, uh, 
makes uh, advertisement and so on, does more of the managerial job, I would say. And uh, character-wise, she is pretty serious. She uh, she moves in with him because, well, you know, she doesn't have any place to stay anymore. Her brother was her only family member left. And uh, so they live in the same building and um, she she's pretty serious, uh, especially as far as the job is concerned. Uh, and Ryo, on the other hand, is, is the complete opposite. He's a... He's incredibly skilled at his job. He's incredibly, uh, he's an incredible good shot, uh, good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, all that you want. So as far as the, the, the underground detective part is concerned, there's no issue there. But his character is way too easygoing. He's a, he's a ladies man. He chases ladies uh, everywhere he can. He goes to nightclubs, partying, dancing. Half of the time he's naked dancing on the tables. Uh, with, with, with hostesses around him, uh, spending money there, drinking, uh, partying as hard as he can. Uh, if they have cute female uh, clients, he will immediately try to seduce them, try to get into their panties and so on. So the complete opposite of Kaori in that sense. And that's a first layer there. She constantly gets mad at him and scolds him because he's, he's just living it up. And uh, he, on his side, is like, you know, every day can be the last one of my life, so I need to party, right? So we have that kind of dynamic going on. But that's just the outer layer. If you peel away, there are many, many layers, almost like an onion, underneath. And in order to understand that, uh, we need to go a little bit to Ryo's backstory. Namely, um, he was actually... Uh, he's actually uh, an illegal resident in Japan as a Japanese. So how did that happen? Uh, when he was little, a little boy, he went with his parents to Latin America for their job and their plane was shot down. The plane crashed, his parents died, but he survived. He was taken in by uh, a group of guerrilla warriors because there was a guerrilla war going on there and they raised him. Hence the reason he is so skilled with firearms. From there, as he became an adult, he moved to uh, the United States, where he, uh, for a year or two, or two or three years, I think, according to the manga, he was uh, an underground detective, so learning more of the ropes there, uh, of uh, that underground detective work. And from there, he moved to Japan as an illegal, because he's undocumented, he doesn't have any papers, official papers. The plane crash happened too long, way too long ago. There aren't any records left anymore. There's no way for him to prove that he is who he is. So the only way he has to live in Japan is to be there in an illegal way. And what can he do as a job then? Because he doesn't have any official papers. Well, the only thing that he can do, which is using his skills with firearms and hand-to-hand -hand combat and become a private detective for the underworld. So that's how actually the whole series evolved. And uh, he is a party man, yeah, but at the same time, it's a bit of a, of a mask he's putting on, a kind of facade he's building, because Ryo realizes all too well that with his current condition, he cannot offer a stable, healthy environment for a long-term relationship. He's illegal. Uh, he, ha he, he makes a lot of enemies along the way, doing a very dangerous job, cleaning up the underworld. And he knows that uh, he doesn't have anything to offer to any lady that is looking for a serious relationship. Uh, and so I believe that, and we have to read a little bit between the lines of the manga then. It's not stated explicitly, but, but you can get, you can get the, the idea from... from from reading the manga, that he knows he can't offer anything for a serious relationship. So it's, it's, it's a bit double. At the same time, he thinks like, I might as well party because tomorrow I can be dead or I can be shot dead. But at the same time, it's a way for him to push off, push back any woman that would want a serious relationship with him. Because he knows that not only can he not offer a stable environment, she would become a target as well, right? His enemies would target him. They can't win against him because he's incredibly skilled at his job. So they would eventually start to target 
his partner and he doesn't want that uh, so there, there's a, there's different layers in the story there and the same goes for Claudia as well a little bit because at the same time she's like um, this serious uh, managerial type and she's calling him because of the job but if you look closely you can see that she's actually developing feelings for him and that her scolding him officially so to speak is because of the job but in fact it's because she's starting to develop feelings for him she's starting to develop feelings for him which she cannot admit because he's that 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 incredible womanizing party man in his free time and it, it it frustrates her that he's chasing other women and at some point in the manga she even says so why is he chasing all these other women but never me am i not beautiful is that it so she even starts to doubt her own physical appearance but the real from his side if you read between the lines also starts having feelings for her but he pushes her off even more than he usually does because he doesn't want to hurt her he can't offer her a stable secure environment he can't offer her a relationship where she can be safe quite the opposite getting into a serious relationship with him would mean that she 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 comes into the crosshairs of his enemies and he doesn't want that he, he he wants her to be safe and happy so he puts on that mask or that facade even more so when he's around Kaori because he wants to push her away in, in a romantic point of view and if you look at the top layer and then you start peeling down the layers of the story you see that whole other dynamic underneath where both are actually attracted to each other but neither can admit it and uh, there was a beautiful scene uh, that really exemplifies that feeling in uh, the movie that came out I think uh, it was the revival um, movie 2019 I think uh, Geki Joban Sti Hanta and uh, in that movie she, she tries on a wedding dress and she asks him how do I look Right? because they're because of their job they're they're taken I don't remember quite exactly but they're taken to a, a bridal shop or something and then the, the owner says why don't you try one on right and it's something every girl dreams of right that that, that wedding dress uh, looking beautiful and uh, she tries on the dress and uh, she asks him how do I look and he replies with a disinterested face hmm same as usual and everybody gets mad Kaori gets upset uh, all the women around them say how hideous you, you you don't even give her you can't even give her a compliment what the hell kind of guy are you he's like looking away and, and pretending like he doesn't care and later on at the end of the movie he sees that that he sees a picture there, there was a picture taken of her in that wedding dress and then you hear him think to himself or saying it with a small voice that she can't hear it yeah you look as usual as beautiful as usual and that really exemplifies their relationship actually that really touched me when he said it like that he thinks the world of her he thinks she's a very smart beautiful caring woman but he keeps her at a distance for her own safety and that was such a beautiful scene in that movie which I can wholeheartedly recommend actually the whole series the manga the anime the movies is something you have to watch or read uh, I have to say this is actually probably the favorite manga anime of uh, of my wife and uh, it's simply because of the dynamic that's going on uh, in their couple here and uh, all those different layers underneath and there's a there's a moment in the series where near the end they kind of confess to each other uh Kawadi says why 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 are you not interested in me why why are you always so disinterested when you're chasing all these other women why not me and he says he even starts shouting at her he says what can i give you 
There's nothing worthwhile I can give you. Look at my situation. I, I can't give you anything. I can't give you a good life. I can't give you a, a stable environment. I can't. And then she says, yeah, even so, I want to be with you. That was such a beautiful moment, such a beautiful scene. She later doesn't remember it because she has amnesia. She was, she was hurt at that moment. Uh, but that, that, that was really the, 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 the beautiful synthesis of their relationship. Like he cares so much for her that he doesn't want to be with her. And that's why I put this couple on the number one spot, because loving someone very deeply and then being together is a fantastic way of showing love. But not being together with someone because you love them, because you want them to be happy, because you want them to be safe, and you know they can't have that with you, letting that person go because you love them so much, that's also a fantastic way of showing love, in my opinion. Uh, a somewhat sad way, but a very beautiful way uh, of showing love. And that's why, because of the whole dynamic, all those layers underneath, that's why I put this couple as my number one couple, uh, Hojo Tsukasa Sensei wrote a beautiful story here, definitely one you need to read. And I would say, if you want to try either one of these series, whether it be the manga or the anime, I will put links below this video, you can buy them. It's affiliate links, it's not going to cost you anything extra, quite the opposite, you're going to get a good price, uh, but it helps the channel. So if you buy them through the links, I would be very appreciative. And most of all, I would like to hear from you. Uh, I would l really love it if you would write in the comments down below uh, who your favorite couple is in anime and manga or your couples and, and why. Because uh, this is my selection, uh, but I haven't read or watched uh, every single anime out there. So please do let me know. Do you like my list? Are there couples that you also like on my list? Are there other couples that you like? Which ones and why? I would really love to hear from you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something interesting. And I see you guys at the next one. Take care. Jane. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, tap the notification bell and sound off in the comments. And hey, while you're here, why not check out another video?